what happens when a woman has difficulty with sex, not because of medical condition, not because of where we are midlife, but because of her past. Did you push record? so much for tuning in again to our second act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. <laughs> Yay. Hey, Silka. Paige, back in California. I'm yes, so and I'm here with you now. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to kick off today's discussion. Me We're, too. Yeah. It very, to very topical, very timely yes. about women's sexual health. Now, in the past, we've done a lot, uh, you know, on menopause-related issues, right. libido, desire, that, right. that sort of thing. Uh, but there's a lot more to women's sexual health than you know, the, the sexual act in and of itself and the issues that we have at our, you know, stage in life. Talk about that, Paige. So you were right, Soko, when we said this is very timely. So when we have sexual health, and I'm not a doctor, so let's just remind everyone, but when we talk about sexual health, there's medical components that we go through in our body, like you said, Soko, where we are in midlife, what happens with perimenopause, menopause, libido, many different aspects. But what I often find that is not being talked about but is being talked about a lot right now on social media is what happens when a woman has difficulty with sex, not because of medical condition, not because of where we are midlife, but because of her past. Her past that has to do with sexual abuse, molestation, sexual assault, rape, sexual harassment and the Me Too movement that's going on right now lends it perfectly to what we're talking about today about how how many times women have come to me to work with me on these issues and I always ask them I'm curious have you shared this with your doctor and most of the time women don't share with the doctor for a couple of reasons they're embarrassed they're afraid to say it they want to push it down they don't want to think about it and most doctors you and i know this most doctors don't even know how to respond when a patient says i've been assaulted i've been raped um you know molestation whatever it might be sexual harassment and how that affects women's sexual wellness yeah exactly and when this whole thing happened with uh, you know that oh, harvey weinstein oh, yes uh, you know we had we had already talked about doing this and it's like, you know, which really cements, we're right on, we need to talk about this. Uh, it's, it amazes me that this sort of, you know, the sexual harassment that still goes on today. I know we, we grew up with it. We always accepted that that was normal, that we were treated uh, like this. And it, it is amazing that that's still happening. And the trauma that it carries on to later in life, which is what you and I discussed. Uh, what, what do women, how, how do you encourage someone to talk about it. Well, the Me Too movement right now is great because women and young girls are speaking up because other women are speaking up. So that's that's a big component. You know, if you do see a doctor that you can open up open up to and it's a female doctor, sometimes a woman can feel comfortable with that. Um, a lot of times women will come to me and talk about, look, I've had some trauma in my background and there's, they will skirt all the way around what the trauma is. And then we finally get down to it's sexual trauma. And you know, I hadn't even thought about sharing this on camera today, but now that we're talking, there's a piece of me that says, you know, come up and share about it. And you know, being in midlife myself, for me, my background of having sexual abuse and sexual assault, and of course, sexual harassment, it has definitely gotten in the way of my sexual health as well too. And, and I'm somebody who always works on it, you know, um, pays attention to it, does everything that I can with that trigger, and I still have some issues sometimes. So for any woman that's out there who they're finding that their background with sexual assault, with rape, with sexual harassment, that even though they might be getting help and thinking, why can't things be perfect? It's okay. It still holds on to us and, you know, in, in little ways, it's very insidious. It's, it's always there in the background, even when you have worked on it. And for those women out there who haven't worked on it because they're fearful of speaking out, take the step take the step because it really does make a big difference in every aspect of your life. Um, what surprised me too in watching the news coverage is how some women in a, actually fault women mm. for having, you know, uh, what do we expect the way women dress? They're asking for mm. it. They are, I, 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 it surprises me that, that other women would say that. Why, why do we as women put that on another woman when she comes out about it. 
Well, this might be an answer that you might be surprised about, but what I have found is when someone has, when another woman has that strong of a reaction, mm -hmm. most likely they have a background of sexual assault, sexual That's rape, sexual abuse. Because when you have that strong of a background, you don't want to face it, you get really amped up about it, and you're going to say it even more, and, and you caused it, you caused it, because so many messages that happen with women that go through sexual assault, sexual harassment, rape, the underlying message that's not said is, what did you do? What did you do to bring this on? So when I find a woman that comes down on other women for having it, because of what I do for a living, that's what I've seen a lot of the times. That's that's really interesting, isn't it? That, and that makes sense, doesn't it? That makes sense. Yeah. Well, you know, so the women that are coming out, you know, one by one, mm -hmm. you know, in, in our example here, or the Cosby women, whatever else. Right. But women, you know, just you and I, the, the average Joe, <laughs> Josephine, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, uh, that you know, you 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 don't have a high profile abuse, mm -hmm. but but you have it. How can how can how does somebody like that come forth? What what do you who, who do you tell it to? What, what can they do? Well, fortunately and unfortunately, okay, where do I begin? I have seen when a female in a family speaks up about something that's happened. I've seen sometimes the mother not believing it, doesn't want to deal with it, because the mother herself has a background of it and never dealt with it. So this is a very complex issue that has many, many layers to it. Um, I've often found that like you said, the average Josephine, um, who's not out there in the public, a lot of times will tell one girlfriend, mm -hmm. or they'll open up to a person that they're, you know, with their husband or their significant other in some way, and it doesn't go any further than that until she gets triggered in a certain way, or there's nightmares, or the situation keeps happening, or she has a background of sexual abuse or molestation, gets into the workforce, and then there's sexual harassment that happens, and she gets triggered so much from all of the other stuff that happened that possibly wasn't dealt with. So there's layers upon layers of this issue. So when we look at the Me Too movement, and we're just focusing on sexual harassment, I got news for you. There's layers underneath that sexual harassment that that female is going through as well, potentially. Yeah. What do men need to understand about sexual harassment, what we're talking about? You know, it's funny because I, I just talked about this on my page that I've had so many men who come and work with me who say, Paige, my wife, my daughter, my sister, my mom has been sexually harassed or assaulted or raped and the men will tell me I feel helpless, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, it feels hopeless, what do I do? So I help them on how to support the woman in their life or the young girl in their life. How do you talk about it? How do you, you know, gain comfort and support? What are signs and symptoms to look for? And then I also talk about, you know what, you also have an opportunity here to be a part of the, the movement to shift and change. Because if you're a father who has sons, whatever you model, you know, that's what a son watches. When you're in the workforce as a man, however you model yourself to your employees, or when it's just you and your male colleagues, how are you around them? Do you hop on board? I think about Donald Trump and who was the guy from Access Hollywood? The locker room, I was just thinking yeah, about those two. Lock, yes. Those two together, what happened? Yeah. Billy Bush. Yes. Those two together, mm -hmm. you know, Billy Bush hopped on board what, mm -hmm. what Trump was saying. Yeah. And then afterward, because Billy Bush has daughters. Right. Afterward. How okay is that? But if, afterward. If it's your daughter or your right, wife. Right, but what I'm saying uh -huh. is, is that afterward, Billy Bush came out and said, you know what? I should have stood up and said right. something. I shouldn't have gone with it mm -hmm. for a story yep. or gone with it because that's what's simple. And that's what I'm talking about. That's yep. what I'm saying. As a man, start to be cognizant and think about when that situation occurs, how do you mm -hmm. want to respond? Because every time you respond, don't forget you're connected to a mother, possibly mm -hmm. a sister, possibly a daughter, you know, possibly a wife. Exactly. So right. we're all connected in one way or another. Exactly. Personalize it. That's, that's, yeah. And you know that's what I do, Sucka. I'm always about how are we all connected mm -hmm. because we are. Yeah, no, no. Great, great, great point. Anything else you want to uh, leave our viewers with uh, before we close out this segment? You know, just that I'm glad that the Me Too movement is starting, but that's just the start of it. We need to do more. There needs to be more solution based, and that's why I implore, you know, the men to come forward in a different way as well. That it's not just about women. And one more thing that I want to add is, 
You'd be surprised how many men behind closed doors working with me share about their sexual harassment, mm. their sexual That's abuse, topic, their yeah. sexual assault. That is a whole other topic mm -hmm. that never gets talked about. So there's a lot of layers to this um, topic. But I'm sure that we'll cover at some we, point, we're Sucka. Gonna be, <laughs> we're going to be talking a lot more on this subject, because not right. only is it something that we carried into our generation, right. this is something that affects everybody. Share Everyone. Share this with your daughters, um, you know, with your grandchildren, for that matter. So yes. uh, we will see you again soon on another episode of Our Second Act with Paige and Sucka. For your second act of life. Bye-bye. <laughs>